So, uh, this is my long drama vid journal for the week. Every time I do this, I'm just going to label the video drama in the front with uh, brackets so that, uh, you know, if, if someone doesn't like drama or long rambles that aren't even planned out, then uh, they don't have to watch. They can click on something else. I recommend they click on uh, the first video that Shayra did, which was, you know, it didn't go with the sheep of atheists that uh, were attacking Thunderfoot on the the whole shepherd issue. Um, because cause there is two sides to this story, but only one of them is getting uh, a lot of wordplay. Um, of course, Thunderfoot is defending his his actions, and uh, his, his not turning on ad revenue on his channel is just atrocious, in my opinion. Um, because, you know, the ads, they, they aren't that uh, invasive. All you have to do is is click once on the ad and it disappears, you know. Is it that much of an eyesore? No. In my opinion, no. Um, and he, you know, even if he wasn't wanting the money for himself, that's money that could be going to a charity. And we've, we've all seen good charities to give to. Uh, actually, as of this video, I think there's uh, still time to bid on Evo Jen's Katana for the Brian J. Charity. Um, I hope I remember to put a link below, but I know I have other videos about it, so those have the, vid, the link. This is going to be a long vid, so I might remember. I might not. And then, um, if you if you don't get the katana, which uh, looked like it could perform some real mean circumcision, um, you could bid on say Aldous Valor's clock, and he's got videos about this clock that he is going to uh, have an auction in Blog TV about. Mountain Dew by the uh, two liter bottle. It was like uh, it worked out to about ninety nine cents a bottle for two liters. And I I got a four pack, but but now I have to. I don't have cans. So yeah, cheap Mountain Dew and the Brian J charity. So, so far, what has gone into it, I am very happy about, because I really like the guy. I still talk to him every day on Skype. Um, we'll probably talk to him after I make this video, while it's uploading. Um, hmm. Let's see. I've got a blank sheet of paper here, right? And the opposite of actually planning out a video... I'm going to just write down the things that I've already talked about so that I don't talk about them again in the video. Which, my memory's not that bad, but it'll just... Uh, it'll help me out a little bit. Let's see. Brian J. Talked about Aldous Valor's clock. Let's see. What else should I talk about? Um, in comments recently... Inventor Gorilla said that I have not been attacking atheist people with the scrutiny that I attack Christian people with, and uh, he said it not on not only in my channel's videos comments, but on other channels' videos comments, commenting on my comments there. Um, to that, I will say, uh, I did make a video about Thunderfoot and the Shepherd thing and Moth Isle's response to it and, my, and threw in my own response to it. Um, that was one. 
right there. Uh, my 90-second ponage for last year's ponage Olympics was about the Amazing Atheist. So I have done a few. And I don't know if this counts, but I am saving a video that Violently Graceful sent to me for ponage. I am saving that ponage for the uh, Ponage Olympics, and the person that is in it is not Christian. Um, not in any any sense Christian. So, yeah, I I don't feel like uh, I need to be fair in the amount of of ponage or criticism or responses that I do to people. I mean, I am an atheist, so of course I don't disagree with that point. Um, but uh, I don't have a quota, you know. I don't say, okay, I've done uh, a, a, a video about Crazy to the core, Inventor Gorilla, Team Master, and one other guy who doesn't want to be mentioned anymore in my videos. Um, so I've done those four Christians, so now I should do someone who's non-Christian? Um, no. I actually watch videos from Christians and atheists alike, and when I have a problem with something that they say, that's when I make a response video with a problem about what they say. So, is it is it strange to think that all of my criticism is for uh, videos that I disagree with? Why would my criticism be for videos that I agree with? You know, it's wow. Inventor Gorilla mind fucks me and he's not even here. Um, I will say that uh, Inventor Gorilla, I agree with one of the points he made in his video that was, I guess, the video of the night tonight. And it was about YouTube asides. And of course, people know my feelings on YouTube asides. I chronicle about every one that I see. That uh, if it's someone that I talked about in videos before or their videos meant something to me or you know they meant something to me I'm going to you know on the day that they close their channel make a video and say you know hey their channel's gone because you know some video archaeologist is gonna come along uh, and wonder why are these people talking about this person that's disappeared you know and I hope Google and YouTube save every video regardless of whether we delete them or not I hope on some level, on some backup, they save them for that video archaeologist who would look back in time and say, okay, I want every video uploaded to YouTube for a five-year span, the first five years, you know. I hope that they're all available to them. I guess there's no way for me to know unless I write a letter to YouTube. Somebody remind me to write a letter to YouTube and ask them if, if they do that. Because I think it would be a good thing. So. Let's see. Two besides in general. Check. So. I can talk about a few of the YouTube besides, but two of them in particular both people asked me not to talk about them anymore. One of them, I actually went through my videos and uh, about half the times that he appeared in my videos, I set it to unlisted. And this is strange. I've actually got a will that uh, there's the solid will in paper that I've signed and and all that, and that's uh, for someone to find, but there's actually 
electronically there's an addendum and my wills points to people you know, points people towards that electronic little uh, notepad for you know a little additional extras and one of the little extras that I have in my electronic addendum for my will is that uh, when I'm gone I want all of my uh, unlisted videos either public or dealt with in some way and each time I do this um, you know I have certain criteria for it like if if I were to die tomorrow I don't want some videos to to come out you know I'd, I'd say like wait fucking if I if this is like 50 years old you know go ahead and fucking set it to public again you know, because we're all, we'll all be fucking dead by then. It won't fucking matter. It's kind of like the JFK files, you know, for the uh, assassination, how they all got fucking sealed, and now some of them are getting released, and in, you know, I guess they figured that uh, they could release the files after anyone who possibly ha had anything to do with the investigation was dead, you know. That's, that's how I feel about uh, some of these videos, it's like, yeah, maybe now that, the, that they're heated personally, they're, they're going, they're, they just have to go away. Or they look kind of silly because half the argument is gone because somebody YouTube decided. But, uh, I still think they're important to history, so. <sighs> yeah. Um, both of the YouTube asides that I cannot really talk about in, in good conscience. Um, I was worried about the people uh, who, you know, I I worry about everyone who YouTube decides, but those two in particular. Um, but, uh, let's see, the other YouTube decides, uh, there, there was two that happened today that uh, happened to be just people who wanted a fresh start. And so they close their channel and they create another one. And that bugs me the same way it bugs Inventor Gorilla because the all that information is gone. It'd be easy to just make a farewell video on that channel and say, hey, this channel is dead. If you want to see my new channel, you can go here. But sometimes people don't want the people that they were associating with before to follow them. And, uh... Yeah, that's weird. It's like... It's like... When I say YouTube aside, I don't mean... Uh, I don't always mean it in, like, a suicide way. But, but that... That is a very weird suicidal thought. It's kind of like when I joined the army, I knew that I would be leaving my hometown and like all my uh, social contacts would be gone, you know, unless I really tried to keep them up. This is like before the, the internet was really popular. We were playing mud games on the internet, you know, text-based multiple user dimension games, and uh, people still had to use gophers and shit. And I, I was lucky that uh, a few years after I joined the army, uh, I, I got a computer that I paid way too much for and put on a store credit card that I shouldn't have. And then uh, I started reconnecting with people. Um, and it was not a, a site like Facebook and, and, and MySpace that helped me reconnect. It was actually an old program called ICQ. And the mud games that I had been playing before, by, by logging into them, I would find friends who knew friends. But uh, this is back in, in the era of pagers. And when I joined the army, I, I stopped paying for the pager that I had, you know, when I was... Uh, 18 and I should have just kept up that pager I mean it was like 20 bucks a month but you know that would have let people still have a way to contact me but you can't take a pager into basic training 
I wonder if they they even allow cell phones in basic training because they could, if if any of them just got out to the PX, you know, if they snuck out of the 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 barracks where the basic training is being held and they just got to the PX, they could buy a go phone for 50 bucks, you know. <sighs> Because we had, when I was in basic training, we had like one hour that we could possibly make phone calls. And there was an entire room based on making phone calls. It was like wall full of AT&T phones. And, yeah. You had to buy phone cards from the PX, which were expensive. Like one phone card would be the price of a Go phone these days. And I told a lot of people that I just was not going to call home. And the few times that I did call home, I got such horrible news that would just, you know, it would affect me while I was there. Um, one bit of news in particular about someone being injured by somebody else. Um, it made me so mad that I, I wasn't at home that I could, you know, rush to my friend's aid and, and do something about it, you know, because I was stuck in basic training. Well, that's a, a a long fucking thread of tangent, isn't it? Let's see. Basic training. I talked about uh, agreeing with IG about YouTube sites. Now, that's that's where this t tangent came, went off from, but. Uh, There is a part of this that I disagree with Inventor Gorilla on, and that is when he says that if people left their channels up, uh, we could declare some conversations moot points because the conversation's already been had. And my position as a skeptic or a Pyrrhonist is that even things that we've already proven to be true should be open for reevaluation. Um, every time a uh, middle school science teacher has to combine baking soda and vinegar in front of his students to show them the reaction, um, I think it, it's, it's a way of retesting uh, a principle that has already been tested before, but it, it is important to to retest it in in front of people as a demonstration um it's a great teaching tool so i do not do, i do not agree that any conversations that people have you know will or, or that they could be used to render a conversation a moot point i think that uh maybe the, they left something out of the the previous conversation um they can be used to jumpstart conversations where you could just say, okay, uh, listen to this series of 100 videos and this dialogue back and forth, and then, you know, if you find any uh, points that you'd like to make about where they went astray, we can make those points too, but, you know, they did cover a lot of the bases, and then you can build upon the conversation, but... I think you still have to look at those original conversations and, and uh, weigh whether or not they covered everything. And if you still can't get, if you get stuck in those conversations and you can't get your mind around something, I think it's, it's still important um, to be able to bring it up and, and say why. So I disagree with them there, but I do agree that uh, everyone's contributions to YouTube is a part of history, you know. This is, you know, some people are here to vlog, some people are here to entertain, but it's all history. So, I've got the YouTube, the YouTube aside plus and minus with Inventor Gorilla. The, the part where I agree and the part where I disagree. So I've talked about that in my backwards planner of things I'm going to talk about. Um, 
I just left the uh, Whovians USA blog TV. Um, I don't tell Doctor Who fans to come to this channel that you'll be seeing this on, but I will tell people from this channel, if you're a fan of Doctor Who, you can go to the Whovians USA channel. And, uh, you know, the first few blog TVs, I think we we have... Uh, I've, I've been able to impart a whole bunch of my blog TV experience on the others. And I think it's going to be a great way for us to uh, talk after uh, each episode of Doctor Who comes out. And the, fir the next two episodes happen on Easter weekend. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, it's nice to have shared experiences with people. So I had I had a frustrating thing happen today when I was shopping. I was in Sam's Club, and I got a, a call from uh, Team Master while I was in Sam's Club, and I was shopping. And after uh, checking out, um. I, I had to leave Sam's Club and then go get some charcoal for the things that we were going to barbecue because the call that I had before Team Master was for my brother. And uh, he said that, uh, he well, he told me that there was one, one more person that, that was coming over tonight. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll get some more food. And I told him, you know, I'm going to go pick up some charcoal and I asked him, do you want the rotisserie chickens that they have prepared, or do you want to barbecue? So when I left Sam's Club, I stopped at Safeway, and I picked up a, a bag of charcoal and some lighter fluid. And I get home, and there's three guys sitting around the table. Damien, Jeff the Beanpole, and Bryce the Gigolo. And uh, none of them want to barbecue, even though I picked up things to barbecue with because I called ahead and asked people what they wanted for food. So uh, I ended up opening a bag of pre-cooked meatballs that's like giant that you can get from Sam's Club. And we, we had those as like an appetizer, appetizer just a plate of those. Um, I couldn't help myself. I got into the potato salad. But then I felt drained. Like, the potato salad drained the energy out of me. Um, they were drinking Kraken rum, which is, is like candy. Kraken rum is awesome. I wish I, ha I had the bottle, but, you know, I don't know where the bottle went. But, uh, you can get it for, like, $25 at the liquor store. And the the Kraken on the front of it kind of looks like um, the flying spaghetti monster snuck up on Cthulhu and just ass fucked him, and you know it it made a, a, a an ass gremlin baby of this weird octopus monster thing that's on the cover of the the Kraken rum bottle, and the bottle is a lot uglier. Than, than, uh, I think it needs to be because Kraken rum is is sweet, and it's it's like candy. It goes really well with Coca Cola. Let's see. Talked about the barbecue that didn't happen. That will be happening tomorrow night. We just postponed it. They just didn't feel like barbecuing, even though they knew I was going out to get barbecue stuff. And we talked about the Kraken rum. See, this is what a list of things that I'm going to talk about in my videos should look like. Only, this is more correct now because I'm making the list after I talk. Um, let's see. Back to the Inventor Gorilla sub subject. Um, I think there's, there's something to be said for the way that Inventor Gorilla is treating the issue of Ponage All-Stars um, accusing him of being a false flagger. Now, um, 
Inventor Gorilla has used the argument that he has never false flagged, only flagged justifiably. Um, if he were the one that flagged Ponage All-Stars, then I guess uh, you couldn't call it justifiably because the, the, the video went up. So whoever did flag it, I guess, by YouTube standards, you know, it was a false flag because on appeal the video went back up. But Inventor Gorilla has claimed that he has not done anything to them. And the other part of Inventor Gorilla's video tonight was about faceless YouTube channels. And um, he would like to be able to uh, pwn any, any one of the pwnage all-stars uh, by knowing them by face. Now, uh, in a previous video, I, I did mention that I was there at the inception of the Ponage All-Stars and that I made the PDS file that is pretty much timing the intro to their, their videos. Um, so, uh, I would consider myself a face for that channel. It, you know, I know that on two separate occasions I've heard he has gotten uh, other people's faces out of that channel, and he's and he's still making, uh, you know, he's making videos saying that uh, he wants to see their faces. Well, one of the videos that uh, had someone's face in it got flagged down. You know, it's like. Uh, I gotta be careful here because you can't prove who done it. You know, two videos about Inventor Gorilla go down, and you know any of the circumstantial evidence all points towards him, but you can't prove it with some with uh, you know anything concrete. But uh, it, it does seem weird that that he's saying, "Hey." I want to see your faces, and then someone makes a video showing their face, and then it gets flagged down. <laughs> and I, I was like, wow. But let me address what Inventor Gorilla was talking about in his video tonight, about faceless channels. And he said that there are some reasons that he agrees with people being faceless, but, but none of those reasons apply to Ponage All-Stars, of course. Um, one of the reasons that he mentioned was if someone has a religious family. I just noticed this is in the camera. I'm going to fix this right here. Um, this whole wall is coming down pretty soon. Um, yeah, we've been remodeling in this house. and This coming out of the wall here is... <sighs> Who did that? I don't know. But, uh, let's see. Little Moonlight is her name. Um, she covers her face, but she does show her eyes. You know, there's you can tell that it's not anyone else that you're dealing with on a regular basis on YouTube. So let's see. Talked about little Little Moonlight. Little Moonlight is one of the reasons that IG is okay with. Uh, people wearing a mask because, uh, or, or not showing their face. Um, he didn't mention, uh, Phantom Lion because Phantom Lion is a critic of his. And, and, and I know, uh, Phantom Lion, uh, has never shown his face and, and stays in character much like Aldous Valor. Um, but, Phantom Lion is the one that uh, Inventor Gorilla was probably talking about when he said the argument that uh, my face doesn't have anything to do with the argument, so that's why I wear a mask. Um, that does sound a lot like Phantom Lion. And see where I've wrote, written uh, Little Moonlight right here? It's it's not Little, it's Little Moonlight, like, like an Oriental... 
person with an oriental accent might say it if they were trying to speak in so, Lito Moonlight. That's her shout out. I'm not going through this video to make uh, annotations. It's going to be fucking long. So I'm not even going to wait, wait through my own words. I'm just going to put this video up and everyone can watch it. So, uh, yeah, if you've made it this far, it, you're probably playing video games and using me as some kind of radio broadcast behind it. Or you have a vested interest in listening to something that I'm saying here. There are other reasons why faceless people, I'll write that down, faceless people have their channels faceless on YouTube. Um, some people don't have a webcam, and Inventor Gorilla previously has said in, a, said in a video that that's not an excuse in his opinion. But to me it is. Um, sometimes people feel that artistically they can make a point better by just making a video with text and music or just by remixing the person that they're talking about because they said something like they contradicted themselves and they'll, they'll, they'll put what they said first and then what they said again. And to me that seems valid. Um, what else? What would be another reason why someone would be faceless? Well, uh, as being one of the people that was uh, there during the inception of Ponage All-Stars and saw the inception of Shadows of Justice and saw the inception of uh, the Alliance of Demons happen, I can tell you that uh, one of the reasons why... Uh, people want their ponage to be faceless is... Oh, I got a text message. One of the reasons why people want their ponage to be faceless is because on their regular channels, they don't want the strikes. You know? And they know that just by disagreeing with someone, um, they are going to probably get flagged. Because it, it doesn't take much to abuse the flag system on YouTube. Um, I don't think that YouTube is going to become like Facebook and have a mass exodus. Um, and I say this in light of all the YouTube asides that I've been chronicling this week. <laughs> so uh, I am I am seeing a trend, but I'm 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 not I'm not thinking that that trend is going to last. Um, but, uh, so one of the reasons why people would make a faceless channel would be because they don't want their own channel to be flagged. And I know with the Alliance of Demons, one of the things, they took it one step further, and they took the pictures of each other, and on their other channels, they swapped out their, uh, their, what do you call that? The thumbnail on the channel that just, your, your profile picture. They swapped it out. So for a while, uh, Phantom Lion, when he was a member of the Alliance of Demons, his picture was this green jelly bean with a, a you know, an open mouth, and it said, uh, LOL what? You know, lol what? And that that was weird because somebody else had the thumbnail of um, Phantom Lion. And Zerota had the thumbnail of Tamaz Girl, Witness. So for a while, I thought that Zerota was a girl, you know, because I didn't follow the channel close enough. Now I do. You know, I, they're in my subscriptions now, but um, more because of Phantom Lion, who talks to me a bit. So there, there's the anti-flagging facelessness, because they, they know, you know, someone, someone might know that they're dealing with someone that's going to flag them. And uh, wouldn't you know it, 
the first two videos that went on the Ponage All-Stars channel both got flagged down very quickly. So I wonder if, if they were on a channel that wasn't faceless, would they have, have gone down the same way? I don't know. Maybe people think that uh, smaller channels, they can get away with flagging them. And bigger channels, they, they run the risk of the message spreading because the people with faces might uh, be able to get more sympathy. Um, yeah. So, earlier today, I caught something that... Uh, it, it was a mistake by Together for Peace, or he was intentionally not researching because he heard something that he liked. The 1% of Americans are atheists. He, he heard that and ran with it and, and didn't look at the, uh, the study that he was trying to uh, reference. So I made a, a really quick Ponage video about that because it was actually 8%. Uh, from that study um, that were atheist and then there was the don't know or refuse to answer which also add to that that number in the you know I'm not religious or I'm not Christian category if you're going to you know want to you know play with numbers that way I don't really want to play with them that way um, but I made I made this video and I knew that there was a chance that Together for Peace would take down his video. Because people would start to call him on the, uh, the numbers that he, were using, he was using was misrepresenting the uh, study that he was uh, quoting. So I asked around... And, um, you know, I don't want a mirror of someone's video on my channel if they're going to take that video down off their channel. His video was still up at this point, mind you. But I realized that if I mirrored Together for Peace's video just to prove that he said what he said, because I knew he'd take it down after I made a ponage video about him, um, I knew that somebody might flag down my video. Now, when I say somebody, I don't mean him necessarily. But it does seem like uh, even if it was Together for Peace that would flag down my video. Now, I'm using Together for Peace versus me to, you know, as kind of an analogy for Inventor Gorilla versus Ponage All-Stars. But bear with me here. Um, even if it was Together for Peace that would flag down my video and say, hey... I pulled that video down because I don't want it up, and you are keeping it up against my permission. You know, you know, even though the terms of service say that you can have somebody else's video on your channel, and once you upload it, it's not yours anymore. Even though that is there, you can still abuse the YouTube flagging system to get a video flagged down for a number of different reasons. And... He wouldn't have to do it himself. He's got 9,000 subscribers. He could just, you know, whisper to somebody else, Hey, I really don't like that this guy has this video up. And then, you know, someone takes it up one step further, like like it's some kind of order, you know, and then he's got plausible deniability. Maybe I've been watching too much 24 and uh, the president in the event, that new show, seems to act the same way too. All these videos, or all these uh, shows about uh, politics and, and plausible deniability, you know, maybe, I, maybe I'm, I'm be, being too cynical because I'm, I'm being influenced by them. Yeah, I'm watching the event. It's not that good, but... What am I going to do? Some of the, the my favorite shows were canceled, and they were great. So we talked about the event. Twenty four. So 
I didn't want my mirror of Together for Peace uh, to get flagged down because some people, they don't care whether or not there's a good point being made. If it's a point being made against their camp, they will just flag because they are fanboys. And it happens, you know, maybe Inventor Gorilla did not flag that video and maybe it was just one of his fanboys. Maybe it was Thick Shades. Maybe it was uh, Sunvolt, the one who painted two pictures of him, you know. Don't know. But uh, I didn't want it flagged off my channel because my channel so far has no strikes. And as I gain more subscribers, I am I am very wary of getting a strike. Every new subscriber makes me want to say strikeable things less. Um, whether or not they're true, whether or not I have a point, if I think I might get a strike from it, I don't want to do it. So, you know, in looking around, where can I put the... Uh, the mirror from Jack's video in case he he wants to destroy all evidence of it um, I settled upon a conversation with uh, me and there, there was Phantom Lion a couple other people and instead of putting it on the shadows of justice because of they're, they're just starting out right now um, I ended up thinking well we'll put it on the, the Ponage All Stars channel if they'll you know they'll host it there, and then um, when people watch my video, they can you know we could put it unlisted over there, and then you know it it was just about unlisting it on some other channel. I should have thought about like <sighs> using one of my other channels, but some of them you know I don't want the strikes on them either. You know, because I'm I'm running some research with the uh, Road to Hell music channel. I really don't want it getting strikes for something else because I'm testing the copyright strike system. So, yeah, I have that channel too. I, I've made a whole fucking video about all the other sock accounts I have. But uh, in testing that, that copyright system, I want to keep that channel strike free. Um... I could have put it on my one of my other channels, the Agent of the Bad Wolf. That's really a Whovian's channel thing, but what what Whovian thing could I possibly have that would get flagged? I don't know. Maybe maybe people flag down videos that have the same content as their videos. You know, um, Brian and I were looking at a program. I'm not even going to say its name because I think it's vicious and evil. But this program would actually vote bot down videos that had the same content as your video in order to make it, in order to make your video show up first in search results. And I had no idea prior to that that thumbing up and thumbing down actually had something to do with the order that a video shows up in search results. You know, I thought thumbing up and thumbing down was like, you know, irrelevant, really. But apparently, for search results, thumbing is very, very important. You guys don't get to see what else goes on this list now because I'm going to write the name of that program here because I've talked about it. It's a vote bot program. And it. When Brian and I came across it, there were other things that we saw just in the ads for it that were just evil. I mean, one of the things that it said was, remove any video from YouTube that you want. I was like, what? And um, it had other features like uh, command an army of 250 sock accounts and you know, given the uh, things that that have been happening recently to some YouTubers, um, this is why we were researching, like, how is this possible? And this program, 
Um, it had the ability to change all the passwords to every one of those sock accounts all at the same time. And I was like, what? Can't like YouTube do some kind of metric and show how many people or how many accounts are logged on to from one IP address within uh, an hour and then find these people and, and eliminate them? You know, I hope they they one day do that because those are the users that are the they're the reason why uh, this site YouTube is not as good as it could be. You know, they're exploiting things. Um, yeah, so you don't get the na the name of that. Um, let's see. Back to the story. Um, the, the Together for Peace story. Uh, Together for Peace did, uh, did a retraction video on the ponish that I did, and he said that uh, it was a mistake, that he said 1%, and continued to make pretty much the same points at the end of his video that he made at the end of the first one, and for taking down the video, even though I don't... I wouldn't have done a retraction uh, in the same way that he did. I probably would have been uh, more retracty. <laughs> but uh, you know what? What can what, what can you do? You know, he made a little retraction, and so I will be. Uh, I, I annotated my video with uh, you know on the top like he just made a retraction video and here's a link you can click here you know to see that uh, you know he saw what I saw too so maybe after watching mine maybe after someone telling him I don't know but uh, I'll be taking and unlisting the the video where I call him on that because um, it, my video is pretty much irrelevant because he made his own retraction and just to honor his his uh, willingness to call his own mistakes mistakes I'm going to just you know unlist the video but when I die that little e will is gonna say make that public cuz somebody needs to know thousands of years from now that when he made that mistake somebody else was on his ass about it so I think that's important so we've talked about that I can cross out the name of this program that I just talked about that way I can still show you how the list is growing the shit that I've talked about um, Shara uh, had some wonderful news in Skype today. Um, mind blowing news, but I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to write Shayra, and Shayra has news, and then she will probably make her own video about that. She had wonderful news. Um, Arsenic Cigarettes had some wonderful news. Also unspeakable. She she'll tell you what, when she wants to tell you. Um, what else? I guess that's about it. I had kind of a action packed day today, but uh, I've told you guys about everything that I can tell you about today, and. I think I'm going to make another video from some footage from the 40 Days for Life because um, I want some more people to respond on that. So I'm going to get on that. And this is my drama vlog for the day.